Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to go over geometric optics. But before we actually start optics, we have to talk a little bit about reflection itself. So if you look in your packet at the first picture, you'll notice in the top right corner a question about law of reflection. And hopefully you guys remember with law of reflection that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. And that all angles are going to be measured from the normal line, which is that imaginary line perpendicular to the surface. So theta 1 is measured from the normal line, as is theta 2. And depending on however the surface looks, remember the normal line is always going to be perpendicular, and the reflection angle will always be the same as the incident angle. Now, this brings us to talking about reflection itself. Now, when we talk about regular reflection versus diffuse reflection, now this is an example of regular reflection, which simply means that all of the lines that are incoming, they strike a perfectly smooth surface. And they reflect parallel to each other. So each one of these has a little normal line that's reflecting off of, and it reflects at the exact same angle, and they reflect to a specific location. So only the person who's looking inside this mirror would be able to see the image of whatever is incoming itself. A person standing somewhere else would not see the exact same image, or they would, see, they would not see anything at all, possibly. This is different than diffuse reflection. When we talk about diffuse reflection, The, ang the surface is bumpy, and because it's bumpy, the normal line is different at each location. It might look like this over here, over here, and it's going to be completely different depending on what the surface is. But because of the rough surface, the light is going to reflect in all different directions. And because it reflects in different directions, that means that person at one location is able to see it, and someone at a different location is able to see it as well. And this covers most objects in the real world. The fact that we're able to see each other or able to see anything inside a room means that these surfaces all are rough and that the light is reflecting off the surface into our eyes. So as an example, if you take a look at the right side, you have the pencil. With the pencil, light strikes the pencil. And when light strikes the pencil, it automatically reflects in every direction. And if, if some of it will just happen to go into your eye over here, meaning that you are able to see the pencil as well. But what does this have to do with optics and mirrors? Well, if you turn to the next page in a packet, you'll see a diagram of a woman who is looking at herself in the mirror. And the question is, why is the woman able to see herself in the mirror? Well, if you look at her shoe, where some light is going to come in and strike. When the light strikes the shoe, due to diffuse reflection, it actually reflects in every direction afterwards. But some of it happens to strike, go out, and strike the mirror at such an angle that it's actually going to reflect into the person's eye. But the brain is not able to comprehend that light can change direction. So rather, the brain is going to assume that the light has traveled in a straight line. So even though it, the light goes into the eye, it actually believes that it traveled a straight line the entire time from behind the mirror, which is why we see our shoe inside the mirror. Now, this is not a real image. That's not really there. It's an imaginary line that our brain made up which is why it's a virtual image. And any part of the woman is able to be reflected by the mirror into the person's eye. So even if it's the briefcase, the briefcase is going to reflect into the mirror and then reflect into the woman's eye. But again, the brain can't comprehend the fact that light changed direction, 
also believe that travel in a straight line and sees the briefcase behind the mirror. This, of course, holds true really for any object that you see, whether we're talking about looking at a bottle inside a mirror or, again, looking at ourselves in a mirror also. But an interesting question is, how much of a full-length mirror do you actually need to see yourself? Because when we look at a full-length mirror, normally we see our entire body, and you might automatically assume that we need the entire mirror to see our body. But if you look at the way the reflected lines are drawn, starting from the person's shoe in A, well, when, the, when you see your, your shoe, of course, it had reflected into the eye. And the thing is, if you assume that the mirror is perfectly vertical, then really you only need up to the, down to the middle point in order for you to see your foot. All the space underneath isn't used. We see the, the shoe behind the mirror, but in reality, we're not actually seeing anything being reflected from the bottom half of the mirror. It's just that we see the image inside the mirror. So if the person's at the top of his head, you know, if that goes in and reflects, then that's going to reflect back into his eye as well. So in the end, we ultimately only use the top half of the mirror. With any sort of plane mirror, you have to remember a few important rules. So if we take a quick look at this animation over here, we have a candle in front of a mirror. Okay. And we can see the reflected lines drawn by the mirror inside this diagram. But there's a few important things to note here, okay? <clears throat> right now, we're going to be looking at the tip of the candle, which is giving off light in all directions. Now, some of the light is going to go down, strike the mirror, and reflect back. But ultimately, when we trace it back, it still matches up to the top of the candle, as well as this line over here is also going to match with the top of the candle, meaning that you have a virtual image that is formed on the other side. And we're going to talk more about drawing lines when we get to curved mirrors. But for now, just understand that the, that the candle okay, will always have its lines match up on the equal distance on the other side. So the height of the object is going to equal the height of the image. And also understand that the distance of the object from the mirror is going to equal the distance of the image from the mirror as well. So if I were to ask you a question, let's say, we have a person standing in front of the mirror. And there's also a chair in front of the mirror. The person is standing behind the chair. The chair is two meters away from the mirror. And the person is three meters from the chair. So the question is, how far is the image of the chair from the person. We know that there's going to be a chair formed equally distant on the other side. And understanding that the distance of the object from the mirror is always going to be the same as the distance of the image from the mirror. If this is two, then this has to be two meters as well, meaning that the total distance of the person from the image of the chair would be seven meters. And that's why when you actually look at the reflection of something in the mirror, it might seem smaller. It's not that the size of the image is actually smaller than the size of the object itself. It's just that it's literally further away. So the object over here is only three meters away from the person, while the image is seven meters away, so it's going to look much smaller because it's more than twice as, twice as far away. Let me clear that. Now, going back to the presentation over here, 